everybody, Aaron, Otter Creek Farm and bushhoggingservices.com. So off to start my day and just kind of give you an overview of you know what I'm up to. So I've got a customer uh, that I'm going to work on their property today, about 10 acres, divided up into three fields. And uh, I'm gonna start with the zero turn mower. And uh, you know, the thing is so big and such a beast. And you know, uh, when I bought the Cub Cadet Pro Z900, it was the biggest mower that the dealer had because I was looking for something that could do more uh, on the uh, you know the upper end of grass cutting and, and things of that nature. So hopefully that's going to work out fine, and I won't need to load the tractor up. It'll certainly be a lot quicker, easier, more economical, safer, you know, things of that nature. If I can use the Cub Cadet to uh, you know get things done. Uh, it has rained in the Chiefland, Florida area excessively this week, and I was looking at the, the water in the ditches to try to see if it's going to be too wet, because the, the one thing I don't like about the Cub Cadet is it's got turf tires on it, and I really need to swap those out, but I don't want to spend, you know, six, eight hundred dollars putting two tires on that machine, uh, but those turf tires, when they hit any kind of muddy spot, they instantly fill up with mud and become super slick. Uh, that being said though, what I did do is I spent some time and a little bit of money putting a small winch on the Cub Cadet. So uh, when I do get stuck, then I will be able to hopefully uh, connect to something and pull out. Uh, another trick that was taught to me was, uh, this was actually by somebody that uh, owned a Sherp, uh, Sherp ATV, you know, big huge tires, things like that. They do get stuck as well. And he was saying that, you know, where they work using their Sherp ATV, sometimes there's nothing to actually hook to. So what he came up with is that he uses uh, at least one boat anchor, maybe more, and he winches against the boat anchor. So I bought a boat anchor, and that will give me the flexibility of winching anywhere. So unless I'm actually, you know, the ground's not going to be so soft that I would just plow into a, a mud pit and then have trouble from there, I'm going to get surprised. Uh, when I get stuck. So I'll be near harder ground and be able to drop the uh, the anchor and then winch backwards, uh, which is gonna be the better direction to go 99% of the time when the mower gets stuck. You know, the wheels will be closer to dry ground because I, I just came off of dry ground. So if I pull backwards, I'm likely to get back on dry ground quickly. So uh, we'll see how today goes. Um, I'm really, you know, this field is in an area that tends to be a little bit uh, higher and drier than uh, you know, what I'm seeing along the side of the highway in this particular area. So I'm hopeful that if nothing else, I can get the mower in there and I can do all the trim work, i.e. along all the fences, around all the trees, under you know, the, the low hanging branches, around the debris, whatever, and get that done quickly. I'm pretty sure I can do the backfield, which is probably three acres. And I think the other two fields are you know, somewhere around eight acres. Uh, four acres each so uh, if I have to come back with the tractor that trimming will already be done and I'll be able to just you know travel up and down the fields and get done quickly so um, if I can just do it with the mower then hey I've really started to make money with the, the zero turn investments that I've made and it'll uh, increase my productivity and lower my overall operating costs I don't know since I'm still learning the zero turn mower we're gonna have to see if this is doable you know, I'm going to increase my cost if I take the mower, come back, have to get the tractor, and go back out. But, you know, it's uh, something I want to try and really start to figure out when I can use the zero turn. This particular piece of property has been mowed in a year. I cut it last year. I'm cutting it on an annual basis. And uh, we've had some rain, so things are starting to grow again. So I need to get on it now before things take off. If I waited three months, uh, you know, the, the grass might be four feet high. And I'm hoping that since uh, that hasn't started to happen and I kind of cut it during the uh, slower growing season that the grass is still reasonable but obviously I'll show you some video of what that looks like so um, stay tuned I'll show you the uh, the winch on the mower here in a little bit and then uh, we'll take a look at the property when I get out there and see how the job goes so here we go this is probably 3 8 steel plate on the back and then uh, so uh, I had a bumper mount which I had to custom uh, configure to the back plate and then I put the uh, the ammo box on there 
uh, because I needed to carry some straps and things like that. So the ammo can work great. Plus it's got a remote weatherproof and it also helps protect the winch from, I don't know, anything from above. The other thing that I did was I moved the lights up here. They used to be down here. And what I found was the light would come around the side of your face and actually make it harder to see. So by moving them up, my theory is that the light will be down, um, coming down on top, and therefore a hat uh, or the you know the helmet that I wear when I'm cutting will block more of that light. So anyway, uh, so far highly impressed with this mower. Just the the details on the mower, you know, little things like this, the little screws that hold that thing down. Super easy to get on and off for cleaning under there. This system here. It's very obvious and easy to use. Uh, you know, the seats got the uh, air ride adjustment. Top of the line mower, top of the line price. But overall, you know, uh, if you're going to spend the money on something like this, then why not get the one that will hopefully do the best job? Oh, the other thing solid tires. Um, the other mower that we rented to get started kept getting flat tires in the front. And, you know, in these areas like, like uh, I deal with out here, anytime that you have a fire and you, you know, the little stubs are left, all of those turn into uh, tire puncture hazards. So having solid here, and then what I'm gonna do on the back is actually drain the air out of those and put some um, Kevlar fiber product in there. So even when the uh, tire gets a flat or a small hole, the Kevlar fibers blow into the hole and keep it from deflating. Really great product from what I understand and I can understand the science so I'm a little bit more confident. So, all right, time to load up and uh, get out of here, go get this job done. All right, so here I am. The good news is that this is all definitely doable with the mower. It is, uh, hasn't grown anything like it was when I first came out here to handle all this. These little briar patches uh, will be a little slow, but they're not huge. So I'll knock those down and then uh, trim around that stuff. They want me to do or try to get inside that blackberry uh, patch if I can. So I'll do that. So take a look because once I get started, I won't be filming I'm doing it all by myself. So let's get at it and get it done. We got about eight hours of mowing. All right. There's a field, which I haven't cut yet. That's next. But here's the one that just got cut. At the end of the video, I'll go over what are the pros and cons of doing this type of work on that type of mower versus a tractor with a bush hog. Learning a couple things about larger properties in a zero turn. Some good, some, I won't say bad, just, just uh, something to take into account. All right, here's the finished fields. Oops. They look good. Driveway looks good. That wasn't on the project plan, but that zero turn is so fast. I just wanted to do it. Uh, also cut around the customer's house which wasn't on the project plan either. They were just paying me to do the fields, but I did the, uh, the road and along the road outside. Uh, things overall went really quickly and really well. So I was very happy with the uh, final product. So one of the things that is very different about a zero turn and a uh, tractor with a bush hog is how close you can get to the fence. Obviously, if you catch that with a tractor, you're gonna rip out a couple posts if you bump it with the zero turn, it's not so bad. So that is a big difference to being able to get a nice, nicer uh, finished cut for the customer. Doesn't that look good? If they did that twice a year, they wouldn't have so much of that scrub growing through their fields. The grass would take over and keep that scrub down. <laughs> 